Well, good evening and praise the Lord. Greet you in that lovely name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a joy and a privilege it is for us to meet again uh, on this broadcast, Fountain of Grace broadcast, and share the Word of God. Uh, so welcome to tonight's program. I have been sharing for some time now on a subject, the manifestation of the sons of God. Uh, like the Bible says in the book of Romans in chapter 8, verse 19, all of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons of God are manifested in wisdom, they are manifested in stature, they are manifested in favor where wisdom is more than accumulation of facts and figures and education. Wisdom really is what comes out of our intimacy with God. Wisdom has got to do with godly, righteous, holy living. Wisdom really has got to do with the lifestyle of making godly choices. Stature is more than chronological age, it's more than appearance. Stature has got to do with having weight, having content, having the internal design that has been crafted within us by God, where our spirits emanate the light of God. Sons of God have got to do with those that have come to a place of maturity and are walking in divine favor. We've, we've also been able to look at something uh, according to the Bible, the book of Isaiah chapter 9 uh, from verse 6, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. We saw from the Bible in last week's program that a child is born. The agency through which we are born into God's family is the agency of water which prefigures the word of God and the spirit by whom we are convicted to begin the journey and our walk with God. While as a child is born, the Bible says a son is given. That given over there implies a process. It is a process through which those that have been born into God's family as newborn babes desiring milk, the pure milk of the Word of God. Those ones going through a process that is allowed of God come to maturity, come to sonship. According to the Bible, there are two parts of that process of the maturation of the sons of God. The first part is the process of adoption. According to Romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 17, and Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 up to verse 7, we know that the adoption process through which children become mature sons in God is a process through which we learn how to be led by the Spirit. The Bible clearly says that those who are led of the Spirit, those are the sons of God. In other words then, Sonship is seen in how we are able to follow the leading of the Spirit. Why? Because we have received Him, the Spirit of adoption, and we have been adopted into the nature of God. We have been adopted into the family of God by Him. And as He works within us and as we mature in God, we get into a place where we are able to become good followers of God because of that adoption being added, being brought into, being enjoined into God's family, which is a spiritual family. The second process through which sonship is perfected in us is the process of suffering. You cannot separate maturity and suffering. There can be no maturity, there can be no perfection without suffering. You and I know of processes through which products like in our homes are manufactured. And some of the products are manufactured under intense pressure, a lot of heat, a lot of tension, etc., etc. Similarly, in our growth and our development in Christ, we go through suffering. God allows us to go through suffering. And that happened for Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8, we clearly see that though he was a son, the way he learned obedience and compliance to the mind, to the will, the perfect purpose of the Father, was in that the Father allowed him to go through suffering. He learned obedience 
through suffering. Hebrews 12 again, like we saw last week, Hebrews 12 from verse 6 up to 13, the Bible clearly says that it's the son that God loves that he chastises. It's the son that he loves that he afflicts and allows to go through pain and sometimes very painful processes. What is God up to? Is he after killing you? Is he after destroying you? Is he envious, doesn't want you to enjoy a good life? Not so. The Bible clearly says he knows that through suffering, then we become partakers, we become heirs, we become partakers. We, we access the holiness of God through the agency of suffering. So sonship is given for us to move from childish ways into mature ways in God. We'll definitely go through that adoption, the workings of the Spirit, and the sufferings that we have to go through so that God can perfect us and God can complete us. I want us to move on now in our study tonight and um, consider this fact here. We were created to function as sons of God. From the very beginning, God's mind was that he would create man and that man would be his son and that man would function as son of God. The Bible clearly says in the book of Luke chapter 3, verse 38, in, in giving the genealogy of Jesus, all the way tracing it from Jesus all the way and going back all the way up to Adam, the Bible clearly says that Adam was the son of God. That's interesting. It's in the Bible. That Adam was the son of God. If Adam was the son of God, then it means God intended from the very beginning that man would be his son. And many of us would form what I call a corporate son. A corporate mature son. In the Bible it's called a teleos. In the book of Hebrews and chapter 4. From the beginning God intended that man would walk with him and work with him as a son. There are certain characteristics of that son that God had in mind from the beginning which, if they be absent from any one of us is life, then we cannot walk and function with God the way he wants that to be done. To help us understand some of the attributes, some of the things God wanted to therefore compute into man and release into the spirit of man, so that by that then man would be this son, this ideal son, this son of his love that God intended for, uh, to have. The first thing we see from the Bible in the book of Genesis, I'm rushing there now, Genesis in, in chapter 1. You must have realized I like to re read the Bible a lot in the programs, and that's still okay. When we allow the scripture to help interpret itself, that's better than when we give our own thoughts. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, created he him. Male and female created he them. Interesting. God says, let's create man. And let's have a pattern for him. God predetermined what man would be. God predetermined the mode in which man would function for him to enjoy company and fellowship with God and indeed to fulfill his eternal purpose and mandate in God. That pattern is called the image and the likeness of God. The image and the likeness of God. Sonship is carried or is contained in the image of God. What God sought to compute into man so that man could be God's spirit. Remember man was formed from, from, was formed from the dust of the earth. And God put his breath into that which he formed from the dust of the earth. So what God computed into that man so that that man would be able to interact with God is that God put his image in him. Sonship. And in that image was sonship. The Bible clearly says that Christ is the image of God. 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. Christ is the image of God. And Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15, Christ, the image of God. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, he is the express image of the invisible God. So when God said, let's make man in our image and likeness, he meant to say, let's create man and build into him the nature of Christ. Build into him the nature of God. Build into him Christ likeness because in that then would sonship be contained remember Christ is the son of God remember the son of God is called Christ that's, that's the revelation the father gave to uh, Simon by Jonah in Matthew 16 he said thou art the Christ the son of the living God remember that Christ is the son of the living God and, and, and therefore in creating us in his image and likeness that implies Christ. It means, therefore, he created us to be sons. Because sonship is contained in Christ. Christ is the son of God. And Christ, who is the image of God, is in us now. Each of us, for us to have been born again, Christ is in you. Colossians 1, 27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so for all of us who are born again, all of us who know Jesus Christ, Christ being in you, the hope of glory, Christ being in you, the image of God being in you, gives each of us, therefore, the opportunity, the God-given opportunity, the great privilege of growing into fullness, growing into perfection, growing into completeness in Christ, who is the image of God. And don't forget that sonship is carried in the image of God. Sonship is carried in the image of God. Now, when you look at Colossians chapter 2, you will see something here. Colossians 2, verse 6 to 12. Colossians 2, verse 6 to 12. Says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him, that is in Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made with our hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. Christ, who is the image of God, who is the pattern son, who is the one who brings us to perfect sonship, the Bible says that Christ is the fullness of the Godhead dwelling bodily. That brings me to this point. That sonship, the journey into mature sonship, is a journey, it's an ascension. We are ascending. It's a journey to the place where we carry within us the fullness of the nature of God in our lives. Sonship brings us to a place, mature sonship brings us to a place where we put God on display in our lives, in this earth, presently. Don't tell me it cannot be done because the Father sent the Son, Christ, to come and put that on display to show us that it is possible to live in the earth in the body of a human being and put God on display. And when men interact with you, they don't just see another human being but they sense the presence, they sense the grace, they sense the life of God in you. It is possible. I'll be back in a short while and we continue looking at scriptures together until we all come to a perfect understanding of this matter, how we were created to function as sons of God in the earth presently. Don't go away, I'll be back shortly. For you, 
I will live beyond all limits with you as long as I live. Oh Lord, I will glorify you. So it's very clear from the Word of God that we are studying here tonight that we were created to function as sons of God, not as sons of the enemy, not as sons of Satan, not as sons of this world, but created as and to function as sons of God. Sonship is the expression of the glory of God. I repeat, sonship is the expression of the glory of God in our lives. We see the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I would like to turn there. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6. For God, the Bible says, For God who, command, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of of Jesus Christ. So we see the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. And now that we are the body of Christ, now that we have been called of God, now that we are Christ representatives in the earth, just like we saw God's glory on the face of Jesus Christ, in likewise manner must and should people see God's glory in us, on our face, even the face of the body of Christ. But that glory will not be seen in and through immature people. It will be seen as we mature, as we get perfected, as we come to mature sonship, because sonship is the expression, indeed, of the glory of God. Sonship is the glory of God in us. It's the glory of God in us. Uh, clearly from the Bible, um, in the book of John, chapter 1, John, chapter 1, and verse 14, the Bible says that the Word became flesh and we beheld His glory. We beheld His glory. He dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. We saw Him having the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That tells you glory comes through being begotten, being born. He had the glory, very unique glory, the only glory that is given to that one born of God. And we beheld Him having glory. The glory of the begotten of the Father. That tells you, sonship puts God's glory on display. Sonship is the glory of God put on display in our lives. Again, the book of uh, 2 Corinthians and chapter 3 again shows that as by the Spirit of God, we are perfected, we are made complete. We put God's glory on display in our lives. The glory of God which is the stature of God, the honor of God, the fullness of God, the weight of God, the brilliance of God, His very majesty and His very nature is only seen in and through mature sons of God. The manifestation of the sons of God, which is the hope of creation, is really the hope of seeing God's glory put on display in the other again. His stature, his honor, his fullness, his weight, his brilliance, his majesty, his nature. And you know what? When he called us, 
That's what he called us unto. He called us unto glory. He has forgiven our sins. He has washed away our sins. He has brought us nigh to himself in the hope that as we grow and as we mature and as we come to perfection, we will put his glory on display again. And that is what we're calling sonship. So it's very clear, therefore, that we can only enjoy our newfound life in Christ when we come into maturity. Because then and then only can we put God's glory on display in our lives. And that's the hope of creation. The Bible clearly says that creation was subjected to futility, not because it chose to, not because it was willing, but it is simply because when man fell, everything around man fell, including creation, that did not necessarily fall, did not necessarily sin against God. But you see, everything was under the dominion of man. And when man fell because of disobedience and left the place of a son of God, simply the place of obeying God, can you imagine that man created by God left the path of taking instructions and commands from God and listened to the serpent. And when man listened to the serpent, things went the other direction. And when man fell as a result of uh, disobedience, the creation entered into a cosmic groan, entered into a state not the best, not what it was really uh, meant for, but because man fell and man was given dominion over everything God created, then creation now knows that it will only rise to its proper place and placement when man rises up and back to his proper placement. That placement of man, the proper placement of man, is called sonship. So creation knows. Creation seems to know better than us. Creation knows when man is restored to the place of being God's son, everything else will come back to the proper order. You know, think about the chaos we have in our world presently. In almost every facet, in almost every sector now, in governance, in the economy, in the education sector, in the health sector, in almost every sector, there are chaos. There are, there are different magnitude and different levels of chaos and, and, and destruction and things that are not so very good. And, you know, all this is because man is not functioning as he should. Man is not functioning as God's son, according to the nature of God, according to the expectations of God, in obedience to God. Very often now we know that many in this world are functioning according to the satanic principle and according to the luciferic principle, which is the principle of disobeying God, breaking God's commandments day in, day out, in different kind of ways that we know have become very rampant in our generation. But the creation knows when man is restored back to his proper place in God, everything else around man and everything else that God created will be brought into proper order. That is why, like we are celebrating uh, Christmas this time and this season, that is why God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. He sent him in the hope that when he, the only begotten son, comes into this world, there will be people like you and I that will believe in him. And by believing in him, then we would receive from God the same spirit that was upon his son, so that by that spirit, the spirit of God, also called the spirit of adoption, will be adopted into God's family, become sons, mature sons of God, having his nature, being perfect and complete in him, able to represent God in the earth. Can I tell you something? As long as God has a people in the earth that walk in his ways and in his will and walk in perfect obedience, God does not need to come to the earth. We will do well to represent here, represent him here, not in our own capacities, but represent him in his own very spirit by whom we are adopted into God's lovely family, family of God, called the Church of Jesus Christ in the earth. And that's why, therefore, I remind us that God, in calling us and in saving us, he had a purpose. The purpose of saving us was not so that we can go to heaven, even though that is a good thing. The purpose of saving us was not so that we can avoid hell's fire, even though that's a good thing. 
in saving us, like he had in mind in creating the initial man, Adam, what God was looking for was a son. And that's the son that God lost in the Garden of Eden. That's what God lost. And because he lost a son in the garden, he sent another son who passed by a garden called the Garden, called the garden of Gethsemane, and through that son and his life slain and his life given as a sacrifice and his blood shed for us, through that son, now God is raising many other sons into glory. God is raising many sons into his perfect image and his likeness. He's raising many sons into maturity in Christ. Would you like to be one of them? Because that is ultimately what gives Christianity a meaning. When we live for a purpose, and not just any purpose, but when we live for the purpose for the which God created us in the first place, Christianity takes a whole new direction and has a whole new meaning. And it becomes exciting to look forward to yet another day, another month, another year, another time, because all these are opportunities God has given us to know him, to seek him, and to grow in his ways. Therefore, dear viewer, that's all the time I had for tonight to share with you God's word. I'm really enjoying it. I, I don't know about you, but I'm really enjoying myself as we look at this, and, and in particular this time when you're celebrating Christmas, remembering the birth of Jesus Christ. Remember, he was born, but did not remain a child. He too learned obedience. He too received from the Father the same spirit that we also do receive. And when he came into maturity at the age of 30, he stepped into the purposes of God and began to walk straight to fulfill God's purpose. And he became an heir of the Father. And the Bible says we are joint heirs with him. Why? Because he, he walked in maturity and perfection. So let's rise up. Let's seek God. Get back to his word. Get back on our knees and seek God until we all come to maturity. So I wish you a lovely night and I wish you a lovely Christmas season and holiday. Enjoy yourself and remember that Christ is the reason for the season. God bless you and may he also bless that which is yours. Good night and God bless you.